Hello, my good people, and thank you for joining this lesson. Many of you requested for this paper, that is paper 2, practical exam, and here we have it. This is distinction 006. We're going to solve this paper fully, step by step. This paper has two sections, task 1 and task 2. We're going to start with the first task, which is testing the presence of starch in a leaf. This is grade 9 work. The procedure is here. 1. Get a leaf that has been exposed to light for at least 3 to 4 hours. 2. Put 100 milliliters of water in a beaker and boil it. 3. Immerse the leaf in the boiling water for about 2 to 3 minutes. 4. Use tweezers to remove the leaf and place it in the boiling tube containing glittered spirit. 5. Put the boiling tube in a beaker containing boiling water, that is water bath, for 15 minutes. 6. Use tweezers to remove the leaf from the tube and wash it in hot water in the beaker. 7. Spread the leaf on a white tile that is surface and flood the leaf surface with dilute iodine solution for 2 minutes. 8. Observe the color change and record the observations. 9. Safely dispose your used specimen. So this is the procedure that we're going to follow when conducting this experiment. But for the purpose of this video, I'm only, I'm only going to guide you on how to answer the questions. So we're going to start with the first question. It is asking, what were the observations made to marks? So because this leaf has been exposed to light for at least three to four hours, so when you test using iodine solution, we're going to see that the leaf is going to turn blue-black, indicating the presence of starch. The reason is because this leaf was exposed to light, and you know that light is a condition necessary for photosynthesis, and therefore the leaf will turn blue-black. Part B. Why was the leaf boiled for three minutes? You can see here from step number three, you boil the leaf for about two to three minutes. So the reason for boiling, this is a very common question, a very common question even in section A. The reason for boiling is to, to kill the leaf cells and stop any chemical reactions that may be taking place in the leaf. So that is the reason for boiling, to kill the leaf cells and stop any chemical reaction. They get those two marks. Part C. Why was the leaf boiled in glittered spirit? That is step four. You can see here you insert the boiling tube containing glittered spirit. So the reason for boiling in glittered spirit, we know that, is to discolor the leaf by removing the chlorophyll. So we remove the chlorophyll, that is the function of glittered spirit. So it, it is to discolor the leaf by removing the chlorophyll. They get those two marks. Part D. What is the importance of immersing the leaf in hot water after removing it from the glittered spirit? So you can see here this is step number six. So insert it in hot water. What is the reason? The reason is to soften the leaf. So we insert it in order to soften it and we get those two marks. Part E. Why is the glittered spirit boiled in a water bath? You can see here you're going to use a water bath. Why, why are we using a water bath? You know that Little spirit is highly flammable, it can cause fire, so that is the reason why we use a water bath. So instead of boiling it directly, we use a water bath. So we're going to say, because the little spirit is highly flammable, it can cause fire, hence we use a water bath. And we get those two marks. Part F, state one precaution observed during the activity. So we have so many precautions, because we are dealing with fire and boiling even hot liquids. So precaution is that, Wear protective clothing when carrying out the experiment. So always ensure that you wear protect protective clothing. So we get one mark. Part G. Name three conditions necessary for photosynthesis. So I'm going to teach you this. If you are very conversant with my videos, I've taught you this in the morning severally. So when uh, cows see green plants, when cows see green plants like grass, they go there to eat. So I'm going to say cows go. Cows go where we have green plants. So cows go. So this is the conditions for photosynthesis. This is the product, the end product. So for photosynthesis talker, we need carbon dioxide. So CO for carbon dioxide, W for water, and S for sunlight. And remember, I said green plants. So we also have chlorophyll. These are the product, the end product. G is for glucose, and O is for oxygen. So remember that cows go. So this is, these are the conditions necessary. These are the end product. So part G, to answer part G, 
Name three conditions necessary for photosynthesis going to say carbon dioxide, water, sunlight, and even you can also state chlorophyll. I'm going to get those three marks. So don't forget cows go where we have green plants. So that is uh, the end to task one and we score 20 marks. Task two. This one involves nutrition in animals. Also, this is grade nine work, a very good uh, question. You are provided with picture stroke photographs labeled P and Q. You can see P and Q. Study them and answer questions that follow. So you have P and Q. A is asking, identify the mode of nutrition of the mammalian jaw labeled P. You can see P. Here we have the incisor, a toothless gap. Even you can see the upper jaw, they, they have no teeth. And therefore, the mode of nutrition for this uh, animal or mammalian is, for this mammal, we're going to say is herbivorous. So it is herbivorous. Herbivorous. What about Q? This is a jaw of a human being. And therefore, you know that the mode of nutrition is omnivorous. I'm going to say omnivorous. We're going to score those two marks. So those are the mode of nutrition. Part B. State the difference between the teeth labeled J and L in jaw P. So you can see J, J is the incisor, and L, this is the molar. So what are the differences? You can give the differences in, in terms of maybe their function or even their structure. So we're going to start with their function. I'm going to say incisor, the J. J is used for cutting food, while L is used for grinding and crushing food. That is true. What about uh, their structure? We're going to say that J has one root. Yes, that is true. Scissors have one, one root, while L have three or more roots. So that is another difference, and I'm going to score those two marks. Part C. Name the toothless gap labeled K in Jo P. Here we have the toothless gap. You can see here we have a toothless gap. So the name, this is diastema. You know that the, it is called diastema. So it is called diastema. So we get one mark. What is the function? That is the next question. It is asking, state one function of the gap labeled K, labeled K in Jo P. The function of the toothless gap, which we are calling diastema. One mark. So the function is to, to provide space for the tongue to manipulate vegetation in such a way that the material being chewed is kept away from the, the one which is freshly gathered. So that is the function of the toothless gap is to provide space for the tongue to, for the tongue, sorry, the tongue to manipulate vegetation so that the material being chewed is kept away from the one which is freshly gathered. We get one mark. We continue to E. Give two examples of mammals with jaw labeled P. So P this is for herbivorous. So examples of mammals, I'm going to give you one. Then tell us in the comment section which other mammal do you know. So I'm going to give one. A very common example is for cows. Cows is a mammal with the jaw labeled P. Which one, which other one do you know? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you so much for responses. I really appreciate. Let us continue to F. Distinguish between homodont and heterodont, giving an example in each case. So three marks. So this is also this is also grade nine work. So I'm going to say homodont refers to teeth description in which an organism have teeth of the same size and shape, while heterodont refers to teeth description in which organisms have teeth of different types and shapes. So remember, they're saying give example. So homodont example is birds or even a dolphin. Dolphin, their teeth are of the same shape and size. What about pterodont? So pterodont is for carnivorous, for example, cats, dogs, lions, whereby they have teeth of different shape and size. So we have defined and also we have given example and we score those three marks. Part G. State three ways how the mammal with the jaw labeled Q are adapted to their feeding habits. So remember Q is for omnivorous. So how are omnivorous adapted to their feeding habits? We're going to talk about their teeth, their structure and their function. So we get those three marks. So we're going to say they have incisors how are incisors adapted? So incisors are sharp and chisel shaped for cutting and biting. That is true. You can look at your incisor and see it is chisel shaped. What about canine? Canine is pointed and strong for tearing flesh. That is true. 
premolars and molars, they have broad with ridges. They are broad with ridges for grinding both plant material and meat. And also another one is their jaws are able to move both up and down for biting and side to side for grinding. That is true for our jaws. They can move up and down for biting and also side to side for grinding when grinding food. So we get uh, those three marks. Finally, the last question is differentiate the following types of teeth. Canine and incisor, two marks. So we can give also difference in terms of their function and even their structure. So canines are used for tearing flesh, while incisors are used for cutting food. Get one mark. Another difference is canines are conical shaped, while incisors are chisel shaped. So those are the main differences between canine and incisor. So that is the end of this paper. You can see that is the end. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also tell us which paper you want us to do next. And I will do it. See you in the next video. Best wishes.